Hi, this is Brian Mullins. I am doing a video on Exposure 5 and a little bit of Lightroom workflow for Alien Skin. The, uh, the great uh, little green guys over there have asked me to uh, just show my workflow, show how I use Exposure 5. Uh, it's a great tool. There's a lot of different ways to skin, skin a cat in, with uh, Exposure 5. and I know everyone's got a little bit different workflow in Lightroom and, and how they use these type of plugin programs. So I thought it would be kind of cool to show you uh, show you how I do it. Um, we won't be working on this shot. This is something I shot a while ago, uh, down in a uh, coming back from a uh, a wedding in Georgia. Um, anyway, so what we're going to do is I've already actually imported everything, and I want to go back and and show a couple of the cool things that I do on import. Uh, we are going to be working on Dave the Pain Train Mazzani. Now Dave was a subject that I had, or I'm sorry, I should say a, uh, a model I had at the Westcott booth at the WPPI 2014 trade show. Westcott was nice enough to let me uh, come in there and, and talk about their spider lights. I've been a, been a user now for, for two or three years of their, their spider lights. And they brought uh, a professional MMA fighter in for me to photograph, which is really cool for me because to be honest, I always shoot pretty things, or most times I'm shooting pretty things, brides and uh, receptions, and, and we don't get a chance to do any type of gnarly lighting. So it was a lot of fun for me to, to come in and, and play with this. Um, so we're going to show you the import uh, process here. Uh, even though it already has been imported, uh, I want to show you a couple of things that I set up. This is my first ever screencast, so if you could just bear with me, I am trying to make sure I lead you through this in a somewhat descriptive fashion. Um, Anyway, if you look over here at the user presets, um, you'll see one that says uh, BMP import with, with NR+. And what this means is uh, it's me, Brian Mullis Photography, and I'm importing some default settings, and I've got another one um, that apparently has gotten buried here that doesn't have noise reduction. Um, the NR, I've got it tweaked a little bit just to take down some of the rough edges. I'm shooting with a, a Nikon D3S, as you can see, so Noise really isn't a factor, uh, but I like to do it anyway because it, it just does knock off some of the rough edges. Um, I'm shooting this with a 2470 uh, 28 at 28, so it's uh, it's a pretty sharp lens, um, especially when I'm shooting around 5.6 or even f8. It gets really ridiculously sharp, ridiculously sharp. So I want to knock down just some of the edges on this to make my post processing life a little bit easier. Um, anyway, so when I do an import. Now here, I'll go ahead and show you now. I've got a card in. Um, actually, I don't have a card in. Now I have a card in. And as we wait for my machine to see that card, there it is. You'll see over here on the right-hand side um, where it says Develop Settings. And you can actually apply that user preset right there, BMP Import with Noise Reduction, uh, in this. So, Everything that you have set in that preset will apply to every photo on import. And it's, a, like I said, it's a huge time saver for me. Uh, anyway, you can also do that with your, with your metadata as well. Uh, you can see all my metadata over here, we have the presets. Here's mine. Uh, copyrighted, no use permitted, without explicit consent, blah, 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 blah. Anyway, if you're not already doing this, again, it's a huge saver, a uh, huge time saver. So I definitely recommend it. But since we've already done this import, let's go ahead and go back here now, and we'll look at this first photo here. Um, now, my import preset, I don't adjust anything as far as the white balance, because I just don't know where I was shooting. Um, I happen to be shooting auto white balance on this, so we do need a little tweaking. Um, I just got kind of lazy and forgot to set it when I started shooting. Um, anyway, I'm doing a little contrast bump. I am adjusting the blacks, a little clarity, a little vibrance. Uh, I've got some other lens, lens correction stuff going on in here. I want to make sure it actually did it. Um, actually, I guess, it's, I guess it's not on right now. Oh, anyway, a lot of times what I'll do is let me get back here. I'm pretty sure it's there somewhere. Anyway, we're gonna move on past that. So Jimmy, take that out, please. 
Right. Anyway, you can apply lens corrections here if you want. Um, apply some sharpening uh, through here if you want as well on that import preset. So again, it's just a huge time saver. Uh, anyway, so the thing I really like about exposure is the fact that it plugs into Lightroom. And Lightroom is where I do the majority of my editing work. I try, I strive to light and to shoot in a way where I don't need to go into Photoshop and fix things. Uh, just because I, I shoot a lot and the more time I spend in Lightroom, I'm sorry, the more time I spend in Photoshop is the less time I'm actually shooting and, and making money. So I, I want to really minimize that and get it as close to right in camera as I can. So we're going to show you, let's go ahead and pick a photo out here. There's one photo I had seen. Let's go ahead and go over in the develop module. Uh, that one could have been a good shot. It's not, I wasn't quite what I was going for. And we're seeing some of the railing here. I don't want to fix that. Um, it's, uh, it's interesting when you're shooting in front of a bunch of people, how, how many little things uh, just kind of you, you miss. So, uh, so yeah, here's, here's kind of what I was looking for right here. I think I like that shot right there. It's perfect. So since we're in Lightroom and since I uh, was being silly and didn't adjust my white balance, I need to go ahead and do that because he's, he's a little green right now. One of the tricks I like to use is I just grab the, uh, the white balance uh, dropper here and I'll see if I can find a neutral. And a white or black or even a gray will work. Um, a lot of people actually don't know you can, you can white balance off of blacks or grays. So depending on the toning of it, sometimes uh, you can pull a little red because black actually has a lot of green in it. So we're going to go ahead and bump that down a little bit. Let's bump it down to 14. That's better. He's not quite so uh, so angry anymore. We'll go ahead and pull down the white balance, or the uh, we'll cool him down just a little bit here as well. And that's looking uh, that's looking pretty good to me. Good skin tones. Um, everything's looking pretty neutral. Uh, so when I when I shot this uh, again, I was at the Westcott booth. I was demoing their Spiderlight TD5 um, lights, and if you're not familiar with those, they are fluorescent lights that are constantly on, and uh, they are daylight balanced. And I, I'm using air quotes even though you can't see them. Um, maybe I can put quotes in the video. That would be kind of cool. Uh, anyway, but as you can see with this one, we're not quite at daylight. Um, we wanted to to back down a little bit. And I have a feeling it's probably because uh, we weren't covered overhead and we are directly under one of those lovely mercury vapor lights that, uh, for me, just go all kinds of colors, blues and greens and, and stuff. So I think that's maybe why we're, we're pulling a little bit down here. Uh, the ones I shoot in my studio, I generally am around, uh, around daylight, around 5300 or so. Uh, so anyway, let's go ahead and take a look and see. The first thing I want to do is I really just want to look at my lighting in my overall exposure. And it looks pretty dead on to me. I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Uh, when I lit him, I had the, a TD5 with a strip box and it had a grid in it. And we used this right through this back part of him. So we wanted to, to give him a little edge lighting and, and pull him off the back. Uh, and then we had a 24 by 36 soft box and I'm drawing a square on my computer screen right about here. And it was a little higher up so it was coming down so we could get some shadowing under his chin. The goal I wanted was I wanted to short light him to create a little drama in the photo. I wanted to show this this texture here and, and the short lighting is just going to, it's going to do both of those for me. Uh, and we also wanted to show the, the rippling here and, and just show off the muscles. He's a he's not an overly big guy uh, as far as height, but he's uh, he's pretty solid and he's definitely in shape. So we we definitely wanted to uh, to show that when we're doing this photo. Um, so I made a couple of real of little lighting mistakes here. Uh, the light's a little too high up, so I want to brush up his arm just a little bit, as well as the inside of his hand here. And you see what I have my brush set. It's a 33 flow, density of 100, so I can paint over and, and just get every swipe, brings it up just a little bit. Um, so I don't want to bring that up too much, but I'm, I'm pretty happy with that. Next thing I want to do is I want to come in here and I just want to get rid of a couple of, of these things. I don't want his skin to be perfect. Um, of course, he's a fighter. He's supposed to, to look mean. Um, for things like this, I found that Lightroom does a, a really good job. You, you can't even see where I, I just went over it. If I'm doing fine stuff on the face, 
Um, a lot of times I prefer to go into Photoshop. Uh, so if we grab this, you can see it just kind of makes it patchy and I'm just not a big fan of that. So we'll undo that and if we do go back and fix this, it will be in Photoshop. Uh, so anyways, so let's go ahead and bring it over to Exposure 5 um, from the Gaza Alien Skin. Again, they uh, uh, this this program is one of the best in the market and that's, that's just being honest as far as film stock goes. The, the I don't know all the work they put into it, but I've kind of heard from from the little green guys over there that they spent a lot of time when they developed exposure to make this right and to, to get the film stock as, as good as they could. And um, yeah, I, I really think they did a good job uh, with it. So anyway, um, you'll see where I had done this before and you see I had an MMA black and white preset here. Um, when I do this, I always like to go uh, to a neutral, and especially when I'm doing something with a studio shoot where I shot everything with a consistent light, because if I get one right, then I can really apply that to all of them, and this should all be fairly close. One of the coolest features that I really like about this is being able to go in and just see some of the different looks I can get, and I can do that really quickly. and just being able to click on it and this really helps me with and sometimes you know a lot of times I have a vision for a, a photo um, but I always like to play a little bit and, and to see what different kind of looks I can get um, and being able to start like with a wet plate for example and then coming down here and I'm um, starting to, to play with the grain a little bit and play with the, over the borders here play with the borders you know, if I don't want, if I don't want the borders, we can, you know, we can take them out. Um, which is uh, just a, a really cool, uh, cool feature for me. Just like that. Um, but anyway, so we're going to go back to my user presets here. And you can see these other ones I've had. And I have a neutral here because that's typically where I want to start. So what we'll do is... Let's not, let's not zoom in on him so much. That's really close. All right, and we're back. All right, so we're starting here with the neutral black and white. And we can, if we wanted to, we could start to use just these color presets just to play a little bit um, with with the look and, and with the feel that we want to we want to get. You can see just by going through here, and, and I'll be honest, this is one of one of my favorite features is the fact that we can just mouse over and, and see everything. And that's that's just so cool. It's a time saver for me. Uh, I shoot a lot, and I want to really save as much time as I can. Uh, so we're going to do the same way here be able to, to, to play with this. And I think I'm pretty happy with uh, with that right there. And look, it even says mostly red, good for people. The fact that we have color sensitivity, sensitivity sliders through here is a huge help. And this is how I, how I do all of my custom toning. It just allows me to go and, and make these pops and these tweaks and my workflow in exposure will vary from starting here to starting to the tone curve. If you're not familiar with using tone curves, they're probably the most powerful tool in exposure and Photoshop. Just being able to, to tweak, tweak the, the contrast and, and where your tones are, uh, your highlights and your, your shadows it is really cool. And you'll notice when we start playing with the tone curve, none of these move down here because these are making general level adjustments where the tone curve is a little is independent of this. So if you see here, if you're not familiar with it, a real quick tutorial. See where it's black here and it's black here. And it's white here and white here. This is the black side or the shadow side of the tone curve. So if you grab this and start lifting up, you'll see the shadows lifting. Or you can see it starting to crush the blacks this way. So you know I think uh, I think I want to bring the blacks just a little bit. I just want to start crushing them, and I'm, I'm looking through here, here, make sure I don't lose too much detail. 
Let me flatten that back out. Just by double click, we'll flatten it out. And what we can do too is we can start to put points here and start to lift it up just a little bit from that point. If we wanted to, we can grab another point here and start to really bend this tone curve around. And if you make a mistake, you just slide it off the screen and it disappears. So I'm really starting to want to start to play with some of the, the mid-tones and, and starting to get into the highlights here. So I can really start to, to get this. Now, this is about what I want, but do you see this is bothering me right here? It's just a little bit too much of a highlight. So I'm going to grab the highlight portion of the bar and see if I can work that. Now that is terrible. I'm going to start to grab this and... I think I'm going to have to pull this down a little bit. There we go. Right about there. And I think I've changed my mind a little bit. I think I'm going to go ahead and shut him up a little bit more. Just to make it a little bit more, a little bit more brutal for him, or for the appearance of it. All right, so we got a photo I'm pretty happy with here. I want to use one of my the things that I like to tweak around is the using the sharpen tool. Now this was already set and it let's go back to let's go back to normal here so I can kind of show you how I do it. One of the things I like to do, and it's a great little trick I learned a long time ago when I'm using a sharpen tool is to bring the radius all the way up to a hundred or the, the highest we can get it. And we're gonna zoom in here a little bit because you can really see from here to here, how much these are sharpening up. Even though it's from color to black and white, this radius here is really what's affecting that beard. So you can see that's off, and that's on. And that's a bit too much for me. I'm not a huge fan of the really, really thick, sharpened lines around everything. So I'm gonna temper that down with a threshold tool, just to get about where I want. And I think that's just about what I want. I just want to have that hard edge on it. Just to make it so that it's a uh, it's a little more of a dramatic photo. Uh, you know, I haven't, uh, I didn't know if I wanted to add grain to this or not. So I might want to do it here and just, just let's just see how it's going to kind of look as a whole here. When I'm using grain, I don't like to pixel peep. I, I want to definitely see the, the overall um, overall photo before I'm adding the grain in here. And being able to, uh, to adjust the roughness of it and the, the actual amount. We're going to pull some of the grain out of the shadow areas here. And just leave it like that. And yeah, I'm pretty happy with that. Now, if you're not familiar with, with saving presets in Exposure 5, it's really simple. Just simply click the plus button. It's right up here to the left. And then we're going to name it. Uh, and we're going to name it MA BMW plus grain. And that will be a little different than this one I've already done. And you'll see here it even has notes. And I don't really care if you have an epiphany bag for sale. I'm not interested. Okay. But it's got some uh, it's got some notes in here, which is kind of cool. And you can see where we applied it. We're going to save it in my presets. If we wanted to, we can save it into a into a new a new category. So we're going to leave it there. Hit OK and apply. Now, what's really great about this? Let's go ahead and select that as a five. and select that as a five. And this is how I, this is how I typically do things. I don't use a red label very often. I was just a typo, as I'm prone to do. Uh, I typically sort everything by stars, and that way now we can just see the two things here, which are pretty cool to see the difference. Um, the other thing I'll do sometimes is I'll actually go in here and do an XY comparison, just to kind of see the uh, see the differences here. Which uh, you know I'm I'm pretty stoked with that. I think it's a it's a good looking shot. I think he's going to be happy. Which uh, let's be honest, he's a professional fighter. I want to make him happy. Um, Anyway, here, so the 
making the preset is going to really allow me to go ahead and I'm going to go ahead and actually just sync all of these up. I'm going to take my brush off because we moved him into position, so I don't want to sync the brush. But I'm going to sync everything else just for color. And so let's look at that one. And I'll show you what how great this is. So I've already, synced, I've already synced that. So let's just open this back up in Exposure 5. All right, so Exposure 5 is open. We can start to play around with these. And that looks pretty darn consistent with what I just had. So let's start that. Let's unstar this one. Let's set my filter to five and see, and there you go. Really consistent black and white images. And uh, that is it for me today, guys. I wanna thank you for paying attention and listening to my rambling. If you haven't checked out Exposure 5, you should definitely do so. They give you a free trial, uh, I think for 30 days. And it's uh, it's a pretty awesome software that I uh, I it's really a big part of my workflow. So hope that you uh, enjoyed it, and I'm gonna figure out how to turn this thing off.